So here we are again in Surf City, trying to finish this single, uh, single wide trailer, 12 foot by roughly 60. Uh, we're doing a simple way again, which was we're just going over it with OSB. The truss will support you. I mean, I'm 250 pounds. I'm on here. There was a dent over here in the uh, where a tree hit. Uh, we pulled it back up and we supported it underneath. But just because the metal's lopped doesn't mean nothing because once we uh, go ahead and put the OSB back down, shoot it through with three inch screws, it'll pull back up. Generally, I use two inch on everything at least. That way, you got an inch and a half of meat through the half inch OSB. Then you come over here on the outskirts, we go with uh, three inch screws, which uh, ties it in real good. We only go right up between six to eight inches on the screws on the outside. The inside, you can go about 10 inches. Uh, you see how we got it all tied here? See how we got all this dried in? It doesn't have much slope, so once we come back up here and put the sheet metal going uh, width to width, it'll run off just like the uh, red metal over here. Metal doesn't require much pitch. Usually they say you need three inch, but this uh, basic trailer was 40 years old and didn't have any trouble until recently with all these uh, patches and stuff, getting old brittle with the old salt. So basically we come through here, we're using two inch deck mates. See how it pulls in? We're sucking it in. Oh, you can back up. Don't worry about that. You want to make sure you're biting it. We're going to do that all the way to here. Do here. We'll go ahead and we're using 30 pound felt because we're not going to have the metal for a couple days. But you see how we go everywhere and even on the end over here we want the ridge going down because the nice thing about plywood is the plywood gives with the slope so does the metal. So even though we're taping down it will have give just like a carport or any of these other self-contained structures. Uh, basically we're driving in. You could have gone uh, Generally, you only have about a two inch overlap on the tar paper, but we went ahead and instead of using uh, four rows, we went five rows and we overlapped everything by 10 inches. That way, if there was any rain back uh, from the wind, it would flow off. It will, even if it sits for a day, when the sun comes out, it'll be gone. Uh, you see on the button caps, we put those about every 12, somewhere about every 10 inches, but on the ones on the end, you see these here on the end where they're overlapping. Just as we put the three inch screws on the end cap, we go ahead and here, we go ahead and we go with uh, about every six to eight inches because we want it really tight. So in case water does sit, if it does flush under a little bit because we don't have a dam yet, once you come back, uh, you got 10 inches of tar paper underneath it which will keep it tapered down. So until it dries and comes off. But once we get the sheet metal going all across here, you won't have any trouble and we'll do that on the next installment.